In this video, we're gonna test JIT tiered compilation performance using C -sharp code. Let's jump in. So it used to be that if we took our C -sharp code, then we compiled it to IL, the JIT basically got that code and already generated a very optimal version of the code. But with the recent introduction of JIT tiered compilation, it works a bit different now. So what's changed really and why did it change? It used to be that the startup time was significant for JIT compiled methods, but if we're gonna introduce tiered versions, then what we're gonna do in tier zero, which is the basic tiered, what we're gonna do is we're gonna compile that with most of the optimization turned off and that increases the compilation time. So that's good because we're not gonna have a cold start problem. Well, it's going to be significantly less. And then if we determine that it's all good and that method is a hot path, we can transition the method from tier zero to tier one, meaning that now all of the optimizations are turned on and that's really awesome. So let's test the performance between tier zero compilation and tier one compilation. And you might expect, or you might wonder perhaps, how to even do it because like i said we're gonna go through phases and the compiler will not stop at anything to transition for from phase zero to phase one and in fact if you do some tests in for example benchmark.net where we have three methods here the quick version which is tier zero the main ops version with all of the optimization turned off and the tier one which is the highly optimized version you're gonna see that the quick version and tier one version are have the same performance characteristics. All of the benchmark codes, most of the time, you're gonna you're gonna see that they're gonna do a warm-up phase, they're gonna do a JIT pre-compilation phase in order most of the time to be able to run everything in the highest tier. That's not good for us, and we we cannot use these frameworks effectively because even if you set the warm-up count to zero and the invocation count to one, they still go through certain phases in order to be able to detect if a thing is an outlier or not. And we might have problems and we still end up with a incorrect result. So how do we deal with this problem? So what we can do is we have to create a very clever test plan and our test plan will be composed of a bunch of methods in two classes, tier zero and tier one. So let's now go to class called tier zero. We're gonna test the sum, for example, and we're not gonna do any inlining because that would be any good for us. So we're gonna do the sum and like I said, we're gonna transition. So in, not, in order to not transition, we can do a no optimization run, but the no optimization run is not even a tier zero run. It's a something that it's called min ops compilation where in theory the code gen is pretty much the same as tier zero but i've been able to find differences so we cannot test it like that so what we have to do is we have to do a different sort of call where for example we have a simple method and we're gonna just call it a single time because remember if we're gonna call this multiple times it's gonna get optimized no matter what in this sort of scenario here. So what we have to do is we have to create a loop and test it in a loop. So we can call this method just once and just test the performance of this code. So that will be very good, but the problem is that loops are optimized out of the box. So we're not gonna go through tier zero at all. We're just gonna go through this sort of optimized state, which is really the tier one state. And if that's so, then we have another problem because we cannot test the performance again. So what we have to do is we have to compile our project in a slightly different way than normally. So what we have to do, apart from setting a bunch of like stuff here, we have to set this flag, tired compilation, quick JIT for loops, which will mean that now loops will go through this, the same phase as normal code, which means we're gonna get from tier zero to tier one. There's an additional tier that we're gonna test as well, but it's really difficult to test correctly. So there's a ready to run image and a ready to run compilation is a state that's called a pre-JIT compilation. And that can go through tier as well. So it can go from like pre-JIT to tier one. 
And this compilation is compiled using AOT compiler, which means there's no really uh, JIT here. It's already assembly code when we compile our library. So that's a different tier. It's not highly optimized. At least the Microsoft people state that it's not yet highly optimized, but we can kind of test that as well. So we're gonna have a bunch of tests. So going back to this project here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna now use loops for all of our methods here. And we're gonna test a couple of things. So first of all, we're gonna test sum. Second of all, we're gonna test division. Third of all, we're gonna test a sum over array of elements, which is different than the normal sum. And finally, finally, we're gonna test some conditionals. And one of the interesting ones is a switch case, which has multiple different states and multiple, multiple different code paths for different purposes of the switch case. So we're gonna test how it performs on a relatively simple example. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the, these methods and we're gonna test the optimized tier zero version and not optimized at all. And then we're gonna transition to tier one. So in order to be able to force something to compile to tier one, we have to set the aggressive optimization flag and that's going to be it. So let's move to our tests now. So let's start with a sum and we have our benchmark code here, which is really simple. It's going to just call this once and measure the time. I know that we're going to have a certain cold start problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically run our code multiple times in order to be able to mitigate some of these problems at least. So let's start with a sum which is compiled at tier zero. So that takes roughly 20 milliseconds. Let's just run it again to be sure, 23 milliseconds. Now let's test the same method, but with all of the optimization turned on. So it's a min ops JIT compilation. Now it takes 21 milliseconds. So it's pretty much in line with tier zero. And that's what we should expect because these differences are minor, but Let's now see what's going to happen when we transition to tier one, which is the most interesting one. So seven seconds. So as you can see, it's roughly what? Three times faster. That's the sum. So that's the simplest operation. Division is slightly more interesting because there are, there are optimizations that you can do uh, between the tiers, really. Not so much with sums, but still, as you can see, we had an improvement. So let's start with tier zero, 33 milliseconds. Let's run it again, 38. Now let's have the no optimizations run, 32 milliseconds and 39 milliseconds. So again, in line with tier zero. Now let's move to tier one. So in tier one, we have a whooping three milliseconds. So it's around 10 times faster. Let's just run it again to be sure, five milliseconds. Pretty good. All right, now let's test the sum of a K elements. And let me quickly go to this method because it's interesting. So a couple of things happen here that we're trying to test. First of all, we're trying to test if this is going to get hoist out of the loop. Second of all, we're trying to test if this is going to emit bounce check every single time. And third of all, we're gonna test if we're gonna get a loop clone version, which pretty much is a version that has all of the optimization turned on. So you can you can read that and watch the video about loop cloning in my other video about the JIT. I'll link in the description. So check it out. And let's test this version. So again, tier zero, 49 milliseconds, 57. There is a distribution there. So um, no optimizations, 49, 58, pretty much the same between tier zero and no ops. And now tier one, 27, 28. So that's pretty good. And lastly, switch case. So let's go to that switch case. Let me do a proper explanation. So our switch case here is again in, in a loop. And we have four job targets where we're gonna sum over a certain state that we're gonna set here. And what's going to happen in tier one and tier zero, hopefully uh, as well, 
is that it's going to get converted into a jump table. And again, there's a different video about the switch case internals. You can check it out again. Another link in the description probably about the jump table and switch cases. So let's test this now. So tier zero, 29 milliseconds, 30 milliseconds. All right, no ops. All of the optimization turned off, 27, 27. It's faster for some reason, but I'm gonna guess it's probably consistent between these two. And now let's see the tier one version. So 22 milliseconds, yeah, still 22 milliseconds. Not as fast, but still faster. So that's good. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the ready to run image. So the ready to run image requires a different compilation. So in order to be able to use ready to run, what we have to do is we have to set publish ready to run to true here. And now we can publish our application as ready to run image. So let's switch here, let's compile. So what we have to do in order to be able to test the ready to run, we have to do a publish now and set the version flags and the release flags and the machine identifier. So if we're gonna do that, then it's going to compile. And now we're gonna have a special version of the application, which is IoT compiled. But I already did the compilations for all of these. So I have four programs here and let's go to each one of them and test them out. So let's start with a sum and let's use the ready to run.exe. So that takes six milliseconds. So this is really in line with what we had when we tested the tier one version. So that's already good out of the gate most of the time. Now let's go to the division. So ready to run division, let's run this three milliseconds. That's extremely good. So the performance is really, really good. And now let's move to ready to run some over the array of elements. And that takes 28 milliseconds. So it's in line with the fast version with the tier one version. And now finally, let's do the switch ready to run switch and let's run it again and 18 milliseconds. So that's really, really good because I, if I recall correctly, the tier one version was slightly slower, but again, since we don't have any ways of like warming up the caches, warming up everything else, the branch predictors and whatnot, well, then we're going to have these distributions, unfortunately, but there's no way to sort of make that happen unless we're going to get very creative and um, maybe I'm going to do another video, how to be extremely creative with this sort of thing. So, okay. If you liked the video, leave a like, possibly subscribe. And I hope that you got value out of this video and see you next time. Bye.